Hello scholars, Miss Coyle here. Happy Thursday. We have a lot that we're going to accomplish today. Are you ready to begin? Awesome, let's get started. Today we are going to be working with a new type of genre. So we know genre is a type of book. We always know that the type of book is really important to helping us better understand the story and the different parts of the story. So we've been working a lot with fiction stories. Fiction is get ready, go. Fiction is make believe stories. And we also learned a lot, learned a lot about nonfiction stories when we were in class. Nonfiction is get ready, go. Nonfiction is books about real things that teach us facts. Today we'll be learning about and reading a folktale. The title of our folktale today is The Little Red Hen. But first, a folktale, scholars, is a story. My hand comes up like a book hand again. A folktale is a story told again and again, often has animal characters, and teaches us a lesson. Since this is a new genre that we're working with, we're going to practice that chant. Are you ready? Say, bring it on. Nice job. I can't wait to see who can do it the best today. You guys were crushing it yesterday when I gave you your master's challenge, your chant master's challenge at the end of the video to see if you got 100%. I already heard from so many families that you did get 100%. So keep it up and remember you can always tell your teacher how you did or even send them a cool video of you doing your cheers and chants. So let's break it down. A folk tale is your turn. A folk tale is Good. A folk tale is a story. Your turn. Again, go. Yes, a folk tale is a story. And we already know this one from our retail chant. Told again and again. Get ready, go. Told again and again. Again, go. Told again and again. Nice job. Let's put them together. A folk tale is a story. Told again and again. Ready for the next part? For this part, we're going to show our animal hands because the folktale often has animal characters. We know characters are the people, animals, or things acting in the story. But in a folktale, normally the characters are animals. So we know a folktale is a story told again and again. Often has animal characters. Your turn. Often has animal characters. Again, go. Often has animal characters and teaches us a lesson. Again, go and teaches us a lesson. Nice hard work, two thumbs up. Let's put it all together. Are you ready? Try to do it with me. A folktale is a story told again and again. Often has animal characters and teaches us a lesson. Nice job. So today we're gonna to be talking about those two parts of a folktale. They often have animal characters and something important about these animal character scholars is that the animals, they do things like us. They have human characteristics. So maybe they wear clothes like us. Maybe they live in houses like us. And also, maybe they're talking. I know that animals can't really talk like us in real life. So if they're talking and wearing clothes and living in houses, that helps me to figure out that they must be part of a folktale. Because I know folktales have animal characters with human characteristics. The second part that we're learning about a folktale today, the second thing we're learning about a folktale, and we're going to keep in our brains as we read so we can try to figure it out, is that folktales teach us a lesson. They teach us a, yeah, we learn a lesson through the characters in our story. So at the end of the story, the characters are learning a lesson as well, and we're learning that lesson through our book. So maybe the lesson is don't be greedy. Share with your friends. Another lesson could be, hmm, maybe you like different things than someone else. That's okay. It's okay to like different things. Maybe a lesson could be, it's not good to brag. We really shouldn't brag. We should be humble about the things that we're good at doing. There's a wide, wide range, a wide variety of different lessons we can learn from a book. So today, I can't wait to see who can figure out the lesson by the end of our story. Guys, we will also be filling in our story chart as we're reading today. I'm going to have the story chart on the screen so you can see it a little bit better as we're filling it in, and you can check your work as well. But before we jump into our story today, I want to make sure we review S-T-O-R-Y, but I know you don't need my help. Say, no way, Miss Coyle. Yeah, you don't need my help for these cheers and chants. We've been practicing them all week, and even the week before that, and even the week before that. So you are so ready to do these on your own. Setting is, get ready, go. Characters are, get ready, go. Good job. Problem is, get ready, go. 
and attempted. Get ready, go. Solution is get ready, go. Nice work. Now let's remember where they take place in the story. So we always want to make sure we go in order from the beginning, middle to the end. S N T, get ready, go. O N R. Y takes place at the end. Nice hard work. Let's get into our story today. Are you ready? Our first folktale together. Say so cool. Good job. All right, scholars. So since we know this is an example of a folktale, we are going to make sure that we are listening for the two characteristics we're talking about today. We know that folktales usually have animals with human characteristics and that folktales have morals, which are lessons to be learned. So this book will be teaching us a lesson at the end of the story. As we read, you are going to help me fill out our story chart. The Little Red Hen. Once upon a time, a cat and a dog and a mouse and a little red hen all lived together in a cozy little house. Sias, so who are the characters we just met? Yeah, cat, dog, mouse, and little red hen. Let's add that to our chart. The cat liked to sleep all day on the soft couch. What is the cat dreaming about? Yeah, those are called sardines. Cats like to eat sardines. The dog liked to nap all day on the sunny back porch. And the mouse liked to snooze all day in the warm chair by the fireside. So the little red hen had to do all the housework. She cooked the meals and washed the dishes and made the beds. She swept the floor and washed the windows and mended the clothes. Hmm. So what is the setting? Yeah, the setting is inside their house. Nice work. Why does the little red hen have to do all of the housework? Hmm. Remember, we got to keep track of what we've already learned. Think about the other characters in the story. We know that cat likes to do something during the day. We know that dog likes to do something during the day. And we know that mouse likes to do something during the day. What is it that they, all three of those animals have in common? Those three characters like to what? Yeah, they like to be lazy and lay around and nap all day. They like to just relax all day while hen is doing all of the housework. She raked the leaves and mowed the grass and hoed the garden. One day, when she was hoeing the garden, she found some grains of wheat. Who will plant this wheat? cried the little red hen. Scars, what is the problem in the story? What is the problem in the story? Yeah, the other animals, we said that they are so lazy. And Little Red Hen has to do all of the work. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. So guys, how did the Little Red Hen try to solve her problem? We said that her problem was that all the other animals were so lazy and she had to do all of the work. How did she attempt to solve her problem? What did she do? I know a good reader always goes back in the story to look for their text evidence. I want you to look back on pages 11 and 12. What did the little red hen do? Yeah, she asked for their help. She said, who oh, will plant this wheat? She asked for their help, but what did the animals say? Yeah, they said, not I. What in the story made you think that? You got it. On page 13 and 14, we can see that all of the animals said not I and they continued to relax. Nice work. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. Each morning the little red hen watered the wheat and pulled the weeds. Soon the wheat pushed through the ground and began to grow tall. When the wheat was ripe, the little red hen asked, who will cut this wheat? Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. 
Cyrus, why do you think that the animals always say no when little red hen asks for help? Why do you think the animals always say no when little red hen asks for help? Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. Yeah, I noticed that every time little red hen asks for some help, the animals say, not I. And little red hen, she keeps doing the work by herself anyway. So I think the animals realize that even when they say no to helping, little red hen will do it by herself without them. And it'll still get done. Let's stop and think. We know this is a folktale, and we already said one characteristic of a folktale was that the characters, the animals, have human characteristics. They do things that humans can do too. So, in the story, what are you noticing that the animals in the story have for characteristics like us, human characteristics? What do the animals do in the story that we can do? Yeah, they can talk. Yeah, they live in a house. They're making things. Good job. What evidence in the text helped you figure out that they're talking? Yeah, we know that character dialogue is what the character's saying. I see on page 17, not I, said the cat, not I, said the dog, not I, said the mouse. They are all talking. It says, said the cat, said the dog, said the mouse, and little red hen is talking as well. When the wheat was all cut, the little red hen asked, now who will take this wheat to the mill to be ground into flour? Not I, said the cat, not I, said the dog, not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. The little red hen returned from the mill, carrying a small bag of fine white flour. Who will make a cake from this fine white flour, said the little red hen. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. She gathered sticks and made a fire in the stove. Then she took milk and sugar and eggs and butter and mixed them in a big bowl with the fine white flour. When the oven was hot, she poured the cake batter into a shining pan and put it in the oven. Sorry, I notice that the little red hen, she's making the cake and it's not helping her solve the problem. Why is it not helping? Yeah, it's giving the animals no reason to help her. We already talked about how even when Little Red Hen asks for help, the animals continue relaxing and just say, not I, like not me. They're not offering their help. And the Little Red Hen keeps getting the things done on her own. So the animals are thinking, well, she's still going to do it anyways. And they don't feel like they need to help. Soon, a delicious smell filled the cozy little house. The cat got off the soft couch and strolled into the kitchen. The dog got up from the sunny back porch and came into the kitchen. The mouse jumped down from his warm chair and scampered into the kitchen. The little red hen was just taking a beautiful cake out of the oven. Who will eat this cake? asked the little red hen. I will, cried the cat. I will, cried the dog. I will, cried the mouse. Stars, what's another human characteristic that the little red hen has? What did she do that is human-like? Yeah, she baked a cake. Nice work. I noticed that all the animals, the cat, the dog, the mouse, they're all now saying, I will, I will, I will. And they look so excited to come eat the cake. Do you think Little Red Hen's problem is solved? Let's remember what our problem was. We said the problem was that the other animals are lazy and the Little Red Hen has to do all the work by herself. Did this solve her problem by them saying, I will, I will, I will eat the cake? No, you're right. They're not helping with anything. But the little red hen said, all by myself. I planted the wheat, I tended the wheat, I cut the wheat, I took the wheat to the mill to be ground into flour. All by myself. I gathered the sticks, I built the fire, I mixed the cake, and all by myself, I am going to eat it. And so she did to the very last crumb. Oh my goodness. Scholars, I think we're getting to our solution. After that, 
Whenever there was work to be done, the little red hen had three very eager helpers. Look at the cat, the dog, the mouse, all helping now. So Scars, what was the solution to our problem? How was hen's problem solved? I know that the solution happens at the end of the story. What happened at the end of the story? Let's look back on page 36. What happened at the end of the story that helped us solve the problem? Let's also look at page 34. Yeah, she ate the cake. She didn't share because the animals did not help her. She did all the work and she ate all the cake by herself and it helped teach a lesson to the other animals. Now they are eager to help and now they know how important it is to help. This helped us figure out our moral of the story that it is important to help. We should always try to help someone when we can. So our city, we read the folktale and we talked about how a folktale is a genre, it's a type of book. What were the two characteristics of a folktale that we learned today? You can use your resource. I know it's our first day, it might be a little bit tricky, but what were the two things we talked about today that folktales include? A folktale is a story told again and again. What are the two things that we talked about? Yeah, it has animal characters and it teaches us a lesson. So in our first folktale, The Little Red Hen, who could remind me what were some different human characteristics that our animal characters had? Because I know folktales have animal characters. What were some human characteristics that those animals had? Hmm. Hmm, what did they do that humans normally do? Hmm, but they do it in the story. Yeah, they live in houses. Good job remembering that one. They live in houses just like us. Hmm, what else? Huh, look at the mouse. What did we say about what she's wearing? We looked at their bodies while we were reading the story. What did we say that they were reading, wearing? Yeah, they wear clothes like us. That's another thing that they do that's human-like. They wear clothes. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. What is Miss Hen doing on this page? Yeah, she's washing the dishes. She has an action that we do. We wash the dishes. She also baked a cake in the story. We bake cakes. Awesome job figuring out the characteristics that are human-like that our animals, animal characters have today. We also said that a folktale teaches us a lesson. What lesson did we learn from this book? Get your thinking cap on, get ready, go. What lesson did we learn from this book? Hmm. I remember there was a big lesson learned by the end of the story. Do you remember? Hmm. Yeah, you should always help out when you can. It is important to help others. That is a big lesson that we all learn from this book and the characters learn from the story. Wonderful job today. I'm so excited because tomorrow we're going to read a brand new book and we're going to get through the whole story just like we did today. So get excited for one more folktale tomorrow. Happy Thursday again, scholars, and I will see you tomorrow for a fantastic Friday. Bye-bye.